Dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiruma Mokobe, your host of this show, Mokobe Snuggets of Wisdom podcast. I do my best to bring fresh and wonderful content each and every time. I've had the good fortune of meeting with uh, Mrs. Gondre, Mrs. Precious Gondre, with whom I have a history of working together over the years. She's a businesswoman in her own right, but I normally don't like to take words from the mouths of my guests. I let them introduce themselves. So this is how it's going to go. I'm going to ask you to, uh, to come and introduce yourself, Mrs. Gondwe. From there, we're going to deal with the subject of the day. For you, uh, dear viewer, dear listener, we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of starting a business, the do's and don'ts of a startup business. So Ma uh, Gondwe, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Mokobi, uh, for having me. It is an honor and privilege for you to, to, to join us today. and. Uh, you happen to be the first woman to have joined uh, us. Oh, really? So we're making history today. <laughs> Thank um, you. Tell the viewer who you are, your background, yes. before we get into the, these matters of today. Um, thank you so much. I am Precious Gondre. Precious Gondre, the founding partner at Precious and Partners, a private legal practice. I am also uh, Mr. Mohobis protege, so to speak. I've been mentored by him. I worked with him for a good nine years, mm -hmm. initially as a collections manager until I completed school into a people attorney, a fully fledged attorney, and eventually a junior partner. So I have been under his mentorship and tutorship as well. Okay. Uh, not only that, I have also been privileged to have been involved in my father's businesses from the time that he started, and I saw it grow over the years. So that's where I kind of mil milked off a little bit of uh, you know business wisdom and how to really start up something from scratch. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of businesses were you involved in growing up? Uh, my father was a fashion designer. He could design anything. He used to tell his, 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 his clients, anything you want from me, I will design. If it's a shoe and I need to make it up and add a bit of material, you'll do that. Okay. If it was selling to any other customer in the streets, you'd do it. You, you, you just had a way around it. So mm -hmm. I got to see, you know, the sole trader coming up into a commercial business. The do's and don'ts of uh, startup businesses, that's the subject of the day. Yeah. The first, let's first talk um, about the don'ts because I'd like to finish on a positive note. Yeah. In terms of the don'ts, um, you say, and I believe one should not start impulsively without a clear plan. Yeah. Why is it important not to start impulsively? I think you, you have to figure out what you are trying to do or what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Unless and until you have a clear plan. A clear plan would entail obviously having a business plan, which means you've done your market research, which means you know your target market, you know who you're targeting and whether or not you have the capacity and the capability to deliver either a service or a product. So it must be clear what you are trying to do. It is very important. So do not start just because maybe you get excited or you get carried away. You must know what you're getting yourself into. All right. Yeah. Well, that's very clear. Number two, you talk mm -hmm. of uh, you know, possibly doing some job shadowing. You say do not start without getting insight into the business, yeah. even if it means uh, job shadowing. That, yeah. That's like apprenticeship, is it? Yes, yes. yes. Tell yes. us more about that. I think that even for me, I had to go through that per se, in order for me to gain the confidence to say I could start on my own. I had to work under someone that had the experience and they imparted it on me and I could see how they meticulously handled day-to-day -day business from just the client walking in to managing the client to ensuring that in the end you monetize a service or a product. So you must get some sort of experience. It's very important because the dynamics will naturally be different from what you learn in class and mm. the practicality on the ground. Mm. You need to be able to marry the two. Nothing can be can be truer than that. Yeah. Um, you see, we should avoid overcommitting. One should avoid overcommitting oneself uh, to anything that we cannot afford yet. Yeah. Um, so how does it work in practical terms? 
I mean, you know, it's very easy to, to, to get a loan that you won't be able to service, for instance, and you don't know how you're going to raise the money on mm. the ground to repay, for instance. Mm. So rather, before you, you go ahead and start up, save up towards what you want to uh, purchase or achieve. Instead, if, you, if you're looking to get assets, you're looking to get office furniture, save up for it before mm. going to the bank to get a loan and you're not sure how things are going to work out. So I say, don't overcommit yourself to banks, financial institutions. This is why companies crumble even mm. before they start because there's an overcommitment. You've tied your assets to things and then your business, there's no clear plan in the first place. So your business doesn't pick up that the bank says, I want my money. Yeah, there's a gentleman who's a shark by the name of Damon John. Mm -hmm. He's written a book called The Power of Broke. <laughs> and he makes a point. He makes exactly that yes. point. Saying sometimes it's better yeah. to, to run on with the fumes a little bit yes. while you're still broke, yes. while you build momentum. Yes. So yes. that's a very good point. Yes. You talk of gradualism in terms of Rome not having been built in a day. That's yeah. a bit of a cliche. Yeah. How does that apply in business? Because um, we all accept that it takes time to build. Indeed. But... Um, can you, can you elaborate on that point a bit more? I, I, this is my favorite, actually, because uh, when I started, for instance, when I set up Precious and Partners, I, would, I was learned and I was taught by yourself to mm. put targets, you know, where you mm. set targets for yourself to say, at least every month I need to raise so please much. Don't, please don't make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> In order to cover my overheads and to stay afloat. Mm. So basically, I learned that in certain instances, certain months might not be good. You know, you might not reach a target, but you can't be hard on yourself. You've just started, mm -hmm. except for what you get, but aim to obviously improve. Mm -hmm. So I've allowed myself in this day and age where everything is instant, we have instant things happening. Instant gratification. In instant gratification. I've, I've allowed myself to, I mean, look at and learn from people that have done, you know, what I'm doing now over years. And, mm -hmm. and their success sticks and stays because they have taken time. It's, mm -hmm. it's been success. That is built up over years. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the way to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. This fifth don't that I want us to cover is do yeah. not bank on anyone to get things done for you initially. Yeah. Are you saying we shouldn't rely on other people? Um, I'm simply saying that in order to do the groundwork, you have to be hands-on. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. If it means staying up late, if it means putting in extra time, you have to make sure you're hands-on. Because in order for anyone to buy into what you're trying to do, they need to understand and get it from you. Mm. So in order to even rope in employees and everyone else to buy into your vision, you have to be hands-on. That's what I'm saying. Lead by example. Lead by example. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. very clear. Yeah. We've just covered a few don'ts. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't want us to spend too much time on the negative <laughs> side. Let's flip the coin, as it were, <laughs> yes. and talk a bit more on the positive in terms of do's. Yes. Um, which are really a flip side of the don'ts. But yes. uh, let's talk a bit more to ensure that you have a solid business plan, a yeah. target market. Yeah. What is that all about in practical terms and what, what, what has been your experience? I think for me, I, I had to make sure I sat down, came up with the business plan, what I wanted to do, and I had to look at the service or the product per, mm. per se that I wanted Which to sell out. Which legal services. Legal services in this particular instance. And I asked myself, so is there demand for this product? Do I have the relevant skills to mm. actually deliver to, mm. to the clients? Mm. What is my target client? Am I looking to individual clients? Am I looking to corporate clients? Am I looking to parastatals? What sort of law am I looking to practice? Am I passionate about it? Or am I well equipped to deliver? Because for the client, it's about the capacity to deliver. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a solid plan, but also you need to weigh that against what you are able to do. So mm -hmm. a business plan sort of sort of you know guides you mm -hmm. in what you're trying to do because you you are able to even gauge or sort of gauge whether or not it's something you're able to do. And you're able to also manage things financially because there's a financial part of it. You cannot start and not be able to fund your business then. So it is a lot more than the business plan that someone presents to the bank to get a loan. It's a lot wider than that. Yes, there's just so much that you have to really look at. Mm -hmm. You can't just wake up and say, I'm starting a business. You, mm -hmm. There's so much that you have to look at. You also have to look within yourself because sometimes we think business is independent. Can you do the job? Mm -hmm. So it really starts critical. from within you as, a, as, a as an individual or an entrepreneur I did. Okay. Yeah. The second thing I want us to look at is to have a clear, um, clear short, medium and long term goals. Yes, yes. Um, how do you differentiate between short, medium, long term? How, what are you looking at? 
I'm thinking what you do every day will eventually give you that desired result. Mm. So basically, it is what you do every single day that mm. will give you the result at the end of the month. Mm. And what you do at the end of the month that will give you a result at the end of the year. Mm. And what you do uh, at the end of the year that will give you a result in two, three, four, five years' time. Even a decade. Even mm. decades. Mm. So for me, that's exactly what it's about. You have to be able to link what you do every single day to what you're trying to achieve mm. long term by making sure show that you're consistent, you are disciplined, you follow your game plan, but you make the necessary changes as you go, mm. just to make sure that it tallies with what you're trying to do. Does this have to be put in writing, these goals? Of course! Mm. I know the Bible says so, but Tell write your vision down. It says oh, write your vision so. down and make it clear. And Habakkuk, eh? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and run with it. And run with it. Yeah. yeah. You see, you have to draw the budget. Yeah. This one, I've... Um, mm come across a lot, you say, draw the budget and yeah. stick to it. Yeah. Um, why a budget? Some people find the budget constraining. Is it not constraining? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. How then do you know whether or not you're making a profit or loss? Mm -hmm. Because that will help you see what, you're, what is coming in, mm -hmm. what you're spending, and what is left off at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That way you can gauge whether or not what you're doing is really profitable. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, a budget will indicate will show what is coming at mm -hmm. the end of the day. It will also show what your overheads are. And you mm -hmm. keep an eye on the overheads because that's where the money really uh, tends to, 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 to come out of. What about the discipline side of sticking to it? Yeah, you have to be disciplined. I mean, entrepreneurship is unlike employment where mm -hmm. you're relying on your boss to give you whatever you agreed. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, you have a lot of people around you mm -hmm. <laughs> that you have to pay mm -hmm. whether money comes in or not. So mm -hmm. you have to be disciplined enough to stick to what you, you've said you're going to do so that even on dry months mm -hmm. you're able to push in things. So it's very important then to be disciplined. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about consistency and believing in your craft. Yeah. Is this about self confidence or is it um, simply appreciating what your profession is about? What 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 can you elaborate a bit for what, what I think it's everything really mm -hmm. all together because you you still need to appreciate what your profession is about, mm -hmm. but you also need to look at what you as a person can do. Mm -hmm. It's also about your capabilities, what you as a person can do. So you need a bit of everything in order to, to move forward if you have to. And what, what do you mean by believing in one's craft? What you can do, your skill. If mm. you're good, for instance, if you're a public speaker, you need to believe that what you're saying is the ultimate truth. Mm. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And people must buy into it. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so believe in it first because I've realized that when you believe in something, it's easier for people to believe in what you're doing. Okay. But when you have an element or a, you know some sort of self doubt, people also begin to wonder, does he even understand what yeah. he's talking about? So you have to set the pace yes. through your confidence, through your passion. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Well, I think you're preaching to the converted here. <laughs> um, now, number five. Yeah. Do not ask for help. Look for help. Endeavor to learn from those who have gone ahead of you. Yeah. Getting mentorship is a prerequisite. Yeah. Do Break ask for help. Do mm. ask for help. I, I just mentioned in my introduction that I was mentored by, by mm. you. Mm. I learned the ropes of administration, the ropes of management because I worked under you. I understood the importance of having a target. I understood the importance of having someone check on you to say, hey, mm. have you done one, two, three? And that has helped me because now I can self-assess. Mm. Because then when you are an entrepreneur, you sort of uh, shift from being dependent. Now mm. you have to be independent to okay. get things done. So I needed to ensure that, you know, I get, I got all that I needed, all the weak ones I needed to go to war. Mm. And I think that even when you're struggling, look for help, ask for help. There's people like yourself that are always mm. willing to help. <laughs> well, when you yeah. quoted the Bible earlier, I thought you would quote it again and say, <laughs> you have not because you ask not. Indeed. All right. As we conclude our time together, Mema Gondwe, okay. would you be kind enough to tell the viewer how they can access you yeah. and what else do you, you are involved in? I know that yeah. you are involved in other activities beyond <laughs> beyond the law. Yes. So please share with the viewers, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, of course I'm at Precious and Partners, Commerce Park, Lot 104, Unit 22A. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I am and our contacts at 3101952. Now email Say that again. 3101952 mm -hmm. and our email is info at preciousandpartners.com. 
Okay. Um, I am also into just women empowerment. That's mm -hmm. one of my passions. Uh, I have a movement, a duly registered non-profit organization called the Pan-African Game Changers. Mm -hmm. It's a group of young women that we just sort of, I have put together to mentor, but also to help in any area. So why you keep going to Harare? <laughs> I go everywhere because we're registered in Zimbabwe, we're registered in South Africa, we're registered oh, here okay. and in Malawi and different other. It's a, it's, it's a global movement. Wow. It's not just in Botswana, okay. but it is an, an, an idea of just bringing women together and help them through their journeys. So okay. we have entrepreneurs, we have students, we have um, you know professionals, we have just a group of young, hungry women like myself. Mm -hmm. trying to just keep ourselves you know together. you mentioned mentoring do you offer any any mentoring yourself yes and um, how does it work how does one go about becoming a mentor in case one of the listeners and viewers are interested well one of the things i've always said is that i think that uh, a mentor mm -hmm. is the one to identify the protege or the mentee it's mm -hmm. not the other way around mm -hmm. i have to buy into what you're doing to say okay listen maybe i could help mm. in fact this is why we have a movement like this one it's women that some i personally identified and brought together mm -hmm. because it, it would be difficult if someone approached me and their vision was going left and i was going right mm. and i might not be able to add value to mm. but it is when maybe our visions align or mm. i know i can pour into mm -hmm. you with what i have that mm -hmm. i'm able to then take it up so true. it's a very uh, for me i believe it's an intricate process we shouldn't take it like you, you, okay. you need to align yourself okay. with the person's vision I would like to ask a small favor. I want you to look at the camera and ask your viewer yeah. to please subscribe to our channel. Indeed. And dear listener, this brings to the uh, to, comes to the close of our time together. This was Mrs. Gondre of Precious and Partners. It was a privilege and honor. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Thank you for having me. Do subscribe to Mr. Mohobe's uh, YouTube channel. The handle is Mohobe's Nuggets of Wisdom on YouTube. Google it or follow me and I'll give you information. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.